Welcome to the Glass Tower Top 5. It is the week of May 9th, 2019. I'm Rainy Knudsen. I'm Neil Farso. And we are here to uh, talk about the top five art events in Texas this week. Number five is the opening of the new Moody Pavilion at Laguna Gloria in Austin. Laguna Gloria is an old mansion and its grounds right on Town Lake and it was part of uh, what was the Austin Museum of Art and what is now the contemporary Austin. And they have done a really, really nice job of activating the space, if you'll forgive the word, <laughs> and making it interesting and making it a true destination. They, the biggest thing they've done is put in really great artwork. I saw, I visited it recently. I was really impressed. But the Moody Pavilion is a new cafe shop that looks fantastic. Yeah. I'm super excited <laughs> about the shop. Um, and it's a really nice place, so you'll be able to go and spend some time at Laguna Glory and, like, hang out a yeah. bit. It's comfy. Yeah. It's exciting. I mean, you know, and with this and now, you know, the Umlauf Sculpture Garden, which for a long time has been a wonderful place to go in Austin, and uh, the Ellsworth Kelly installation at the Blanton, that's a pretty fun way to spend an afternoon outside in Austin. So number four is uh, the new show at the Woody Museum in San Antonio, 250 Years of Texas Art. This is a traveling show that's going through Texas. And the Witty is a museum that's not exactly an art museum. It's uh, been redone recently, and it has, you know, kind of Texas history and dinosaur bones. It's very kid-friendly, but it's cool. It's a nice building. Yeah, it's a nice building, and it's a fun place to go as a family. And they're doing this, you know, quite comprehensive, uh, ambitious show that's going to have, you know, people like Julian Underdog and some of those Hill Country uh, landscape masters to more modern people like the dearly departed Luis Jimenez and then also yeah. they're including Georgia O'Keeffe which is a little southwest stretch but you know <laughs> uh, why not so We're um, close to New Mexico yeah exactly. and she did spend time in Texas yeah. technically I like yeah. that they've organized it thematically so it'll it's very cross-generational it is not mm -hmm. a chronological installation as you said they're going way back to like Frank Ray and Julian yeah. Underdonk and early people but then all the way up to the year 2000 so that'll be interesting to see what the later stuff is yeah, yeah. number three is sight lines this is at the Asia Society Texas Center here in Houston and this show opened in April it is up until August mid-August so you've got all summer to see it this is exciting because this is the first time that the Asia Society has done a show of all Texas artists. So all five of these artists in the show live in Texas mm -hmm. and have family backgrounds or themselves were born in various Asian countries. Of course, Asia is a big place, so you have everything from India uh, to China. There's an artist who's Vietnamese, Japanese, and it's a really interesting a Pakistani artist. So it's a very interesting mix of artists and art making, it's very ambitious. Big installations, big room-sized installations, extremely handsome, lots of political content, um, and I just enjoyed the show very, very much. Oh, well, this show seems to emphasize, you know, the importance of Texas and the Asian diaspora, which, you know, is something that I think is often overlooked in the way that Texas is discussed culturally and politically, but in terms of a destination for a lot of, you know, immigrants from Asia, Texas, at this point in time, probably ranks above, you know, places that one would think of in the past, you know, be it like San Francisco or mm -hmm, New York, mm -hmm. it's really kind of Dallas and Houston now. Yeah. So that's, that's an interesting aspect of Texas that I'm glad is sort of being emphasized through the show. Yes. Number two is going to be uh, the Stonewall at 50 show at the Contemporary Arts Museum, Houston. And this is going to follow uh, the CAM's kind of commitment to doing very socially engaged exhibitions. And now we have show about Stonewall at 50, which, you know, the Stonewall Inn was a bar, a gay bar in the 60s in New York, and in June of 1969, the police cracked down on it, and the patrons and residents of the community kind of fed up by state violence against their community, fought back, protested. And it this, was weeks of violence. Yeah, it was weeks of protests, yeah. and it was, uh, it really kind of marked the beginning of that. It mar marked the beginning of visibility for, you know, gay rights, for trans rights. But this is a show of contemporary artists, contemporary LGBTQ artists and allied artists responding to Stonewall at 50. So it should be a, you know, pretty impressive and provocative show. And it's runs through July and I would definitely not miss that. And number one this week is at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. It is Disappearing California circa 1970. Bastian Ader, Chris Burden, and Jack Goldstein. 
This show opens this weekend. Christina has seen it. She went to the press preview. Most of the show is ephemera and documentation of artworks that were meant to disappear, hence the title. And so you have ephemera from Chris Burden's performances. You have Bastian Ader's films. Curiously, apparently there are a bunch of Jack Goldstein more recent paintings in the show, which don't really fit with the disappearing side of things, but that's okay. It's a show that is really looking at the work of three artists who at that time were um, exploring ideas that were trying to get away from the object, you know, basically, mm -hmm. in various different ways. And so there are some objects left over from their works, and that's what we get to see, as well as the documentation. Christina said it's well worth the uh, viewing, and it's up until August 11th, and I think it's going to be really good. This era of art and this, you know, kind of art contemplating sort of the loss of 60s utopianism mm -hmm. is a very uh, vital and interesting current for me. So uh, absolute can't miss, number one with a bullet. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, so go see some art this week. Go see some art with your mom on Sunday. It's, it's Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Yeah. Say hi to your mom, tell her you love her, the mom in your life, whoever it is. Go to a museum store and buy your mom a Mother's Day present. Museum stores have a lot of Mother's Day friendly gifts. I Absolutely. Think. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Moms so, love museums. Yeah. Stores. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely <laughs> true.